And the Lord began to speak to me and tell me that the believers who are the weakest are the ones that are going to be devoured by the enemy. Satan is prowling, he's walking about this earth as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's going after the weak. Now what are the weak? Who are? Who would be categorized as those who are weak? Is it the ones who aren't praying enough? The ones who aren't faithful to church? The ones who uh, don't faithfully uh, read their Bibles and do all of the, the spiritual things that we feel that we should do and, and we should do if it's done rightly in a right context? But are those the ones who are weak? The answer to that question is no. It's the ones who do not have their faith properly placed in the Lord Jesus Christ and His redemption plan, what He has done on the cross of Calvary. I'm here to tell you tonight that if you are not wholeheartedly in Christ Jesus, I'm talking about your everyday walk, Yes, you have a position there the moment that you are saved. But the question is, is where is your condition? Does your condition meet up with your position? Are you living your everyday life as a Christian, as one who is in Christ Jesus? Is His life constantly and continually pulsating in your very being? Is He your life? Has He become your everything? Are you living your life in Christ Jesus? That is the question tonight. Because if you are not, then the enemy will do with you whatsoever he wants to do. You become one who is susceptible to what he wants to do in your life. He wants to strip away. He wants to take away the very life of God. As I said before, that Satan cares very little about you. It's the Christ that is in you that he wants to disrupt, that he wants to uh, get you uh, straight away from, to get your focus away from. You see, because Satan cannot stand against Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only antidote to the works of the enemy. If you are going to attempt to overcome him, and deal with him and fight him by the works of the flesh and it may be very good flesh, very good intentions, religious flesh. You know, we are very good as believers and we're trained that way, I think, from the time that we get saved and as we uh, embark on our journey as Christians, you know, in our walk, in our, in our influence, our traditional and uh, denominational influence, we are trained to fight in the flesh. You know, we cloak over our lives, our religious lives, we cloak them over with Scripture, we make them look good, we quote Scripture. And in essence, that all that is, it's, it's like trying to take a pig, put lipstick on it, and make it look presentable. It's still nothing more than a pig. It's going to go right back into a mud puddle, roll around in the mud, and just be a pig. That's what we are as those who try to be Christ-like. We try to serve God. We try to walk after God, but we do it in the flesh. You cannot do it. You do not have the capacity. You do not have what it takes within yourself to walk after God, to be right with God, to serve God, to love God, to do anything in the kingdom of God. It is only the Christ that lives within your heart and within your life. That is all that matters. And that is the one that Satan is coming against. He wants to take away that seed that has been planted within your heart. However much that seed has grown and maybe in an infancy state, 
But Satan wants to take that seed away. He wants to disrupt it. He wants to steal it away. Because he knows that if you as a believer will live your life in Christ and you'll walk as one who is crucified with him, he knows what a powerful testimony that you will be of God. You see, you can only be a testimony to the degree that you are living in Christ. If you're not living in Christ, and Christ does not have free course within your heart and within your life, your testimony is going to, going to be void, null and void. It will not have any impact, any importance. It will not have any significance in the kingdom of God. You know what a testimony is and what a witness is? It is a replica, a representation, a record of that which is in heaven. And what God has called each and every one of you to be is a record, a replica, a representation of that which is in heaven. Because you have a deposit of the glory of God, of the presence of God in your life. The Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You have the living God residing within you through the person of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that? You know, if we really realized that that person that we are sitting next to, if we really fully understood what is deposited within them, that person sitting next to you has a deposit of the living God by the person of the Holy Spirit. I think maybe that we would appreciate one another just a little bit more. We would look to one another a little bit more. We would recognize what is in each and every one of us just a little bit more. You have a deposit of Christ within you. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. Jesus Christ, by the person of the Holy Spirit, lives and resides within you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Let's look at this verse a little bit further. He says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That's a, a, a very powerful truth in itself. Humble yourself. Really, I, I've heard some translate that as be humbled under the mighty hand of God. That you have the responsibility to put yourself in a position to where your life is yielded and submitted to the Heavenly Father, and you become humbled under the mighty hand of God. It puts you in a position to where now He can work in you. He can do in you what He wants to do. God wants to form you. He wants to shape you. He wants to conform you into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That cannot take place unless you humble yourself or be humbled under the mighty hand of God. You see, God can only work with yielded vessels. He can only work with those who will lay their lives down before Him. And that puts you in a position to where God Almighty can work with you. You see, because God really has one goal for you. And that's to conform you into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit Himself is interceding on your behalf. And His goal and His burden and His desire is in fact to make you more like Jesus. The Bible says also that He is jealous over you. The Holy Spirit lusteth to envy, to make you more like Jesus. But this can only happen if you will humble yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Be humble. He will do great things in your life. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about. That word sober, it means to be not, not to be intoxicated. And I know automatically we go into the realm of, of liquor, of wine, of, of whatever, of, of, of natural intoxication. But I believe that what that really means is not to be intoxicated with something other than the life of Christ. You see, you can be intoxicated by this world. You can live your life in such a way to where this world system corrupts and interrupts 
and gets in the way of your relationship with the Lord.